Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad you decided to join us this morning. So I'm going to start with a pretty big question today, and that is, what makes life worth living? What do you think gets people up in the morning, give them real meaning and purpose in life? Is it success, or is it maybe fortune, you know, the amount of possessions they have in life or can acquire in life, or maybe something like power? These are often the things that are pursued, that are pursued by people with a lot of focus and a lot of energy. And yet I believe there's something that's much more important than that. Something that will give real meaning to your life. And when you find the source of that, it will change your life forever. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So before I come to that, maybe we should just turn the whole thing around and approach it from the other side. By asking the question, what doesn't make life worth living? Or what sometimes prevents people from feeling that they want to get out of bed in the mornings? That I have something to live for? What, in a sense, are life stealers? And I'm not talking about a lack of these things I just mentioned, like success or failure or power. These things are not inherently good or bad. The effect they will have on how you live your life and whether your life has meaning has a lot to do with where they are in terms of priorities in your life. If life revolves around you, these things often become the first priority. And that is what could lead to a lot of damage and even destruction in your own life. For instance, success is not bad. In fact, I think we should all strive for excellence. I remember in the primary school I went to, our headmaster probably spoke more on one Bible verse than on anything else. And it almost became our school motto. It was from Colossians 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. This means that no matter what you do, whether you worked academically or went out on a sports field or were busy with cultural activities, you gave it your absolute best. You always strive for excellence. Even if your opponents are much bigger or better than you are, you never go out on a sports field to lose. That would be dishonoring to yourself and to your teammates and even to God. To put it differently, God gave you the talents you've got for a reason. And you are supposed to use them to the full. So strive for excellence in whatever you do. There's nothing wrong with that. However, the problem comes in when that becomes your be-all and end-all in life. When you are willing to do anything, and I mean anything, to be successful. When you don't care anymore about the damage you may cause to other people as long as you fulfill your dreams and reach your goals. The problem is not striving for excellence. The problem is that when that becomes your highest priority and not loving God and loving other people. Same is true of power. Power often comes because of this position in society. It could be a result of using your talents and becoming a famous sports star or music performer or some other celebrity. It could be a result of being a great leader and leading your organization or your team or your, even your country to great heights. It could even be because you were born as part of a certain family like the royal family. Now, none of these things are bad in itself. The problem comes in when power or influence that you have are being used for the wrong reasons or the wrong things, just like looking after yourself or misusing other people in the process. In the words of Spider-Man's uncle, Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. The problem is not power. It is when you are not loving God and loving other people. It's your highest priority in life. Same is true of possessions or fortune. Riches in itself is not bad, friends. Again, it's often the result of being successful in some other area of your life and using your talents very well. To have money or have possessions will definitely give you options in life. And like with anything else, you can use it to build God's kingdom on earth or to better the lives of other people. Or you can use it to just look after yourself. And more often than not, when life is about you, money becomes the goal and the priority in your life. And relationships with God and with other people often end up as collateral damage. In all these things, you can see that the problem is when Life is about you when love for God and for others is not a first priority in your life. 
Anyway, it's usually not these things or lack thereof that makes people feel as though their life has no meaning. Although, you know, they already allude to what the th thing is that I believe makes life worth living. There are a few other issues, though that can cause people to just want to give up, to just want to throw in the towel and say, you know, that's it. I've had enough. I can't take it anymore. And I'm sure if you've ever experienced any of these life stealers, that you may have felt exactly the same, or maybe you are feeling the same right now. Number one is rejection. Some of the deepest emotional wounds of people are caused by rejection they experience. And this can happen as a result of some big issues like rejection from one's birth family, or maybe a friend who betrayed them, or maybe a spouse or a partner who just walked out on them. It can also happen in many small ways every day, whether that's intentional or unintentional, like being um, turned down for a job you really wanted, or not being um, invited to a social gathering or a party that you thought you were going to be invited to. Either way, feeling rejected can cause serious emotional pain in someone. In fact, saying once bitten, twice shy often applies to people who have experienced painful rejection in the past. They may find it extremely difficult to, to risk the same hurt by venturing out and trying to connect with other people. Being afraid that they might be rejected again and they just don't want to risk that pain. You know, when I was studying, I remember one of my professors saying that people usually think that the worst emotional pain that someone can experience is the loss of a child. But he argued that the worst emotional pain is actually that of divorce. And his reasoning was that when you lose a child, that's not something you have any control over. It's one of those life events that's totally out of your control. But a divorce is a conscious decision by a per the person who you trusted with your innermost feelings to reject you. And to be honest, the more I work with people who are trying to pick up the pieces after some relationship breakdown, the more I understand where he was coming from when he said that. Because rejection hurts. It often affects people's self-esteem and their confidence on a very, very deep level. And it takes them years to rebuild their confidence again. And with just the slightest whiff of rejection, all those old feelings of not being good enough, not being accepted for who they are, come rushing back again. Which can sometimes lead directly to the second big life stealer. And that is loneliness. According to the Office of, for National Statistics, around 2.4 million adults in the UK are feeling lonely. Now, what's interesting to me was, as I read their report, was that um, although loneliness is normally associated with older people, it was the young people, the age group 16 to 24, who reported feeling lonely more often than those of the older age groups. Loneliness, friends, is an issue that can affect people from all ages, regardless of their socioeconomic status. And friends, these statistics were compiled before social distancing. And a subsequent lockdown. And my hunch is that loads more people all over the world are struggling with this issue of loneliness right now. Many people used to alleviate their feelings of loneliness by just popping out to the shops or buying a coffee or visiting a friend. And these things are not happening anymore. And with the increase in isolation comes the increase in loneliness. Currently, there are so many articles online telling us how to cope with loneliness during the coronavirus epidemic. You see these um, articles everywhere. And one article I read was about a charity reaching out to people who are lonely. And this is something they usually do, and usually they get about 30 to 40 volunteers every month, you know, who volunteer to make phone calls to lonely people and, and just reach out to people who are lonely. During the month of March, they received 684 volunteers. People realize instinctively that this is a big issue because no one wants to be lonely. Loneliness is the feeling that you have that no one is there that you can rely on in a crisis. So it's not just about the quantity of relationships in someone's life. It's also about the quality of those relationships. And again, this could lead to life stealer number three, and that is despair. 
That is when you feel a total loss of hope, when you just can't see any way out. This is the emotion that often goes hand in hand with suicides. It's when people feel so down, so depressed, so lost, so without hope, uh, that I just don't see any other way out. It's to experience a darkness that just hangs over your soul. Two authors, Anne Case and Angus Deaton, recently wrote a book in which they talk about deaths of despair. And they specifically see these deaths um, as death, deaths due to drug overdose, alcohol poisoning, or suicides. And they discovered through their research that I did in the United States that these deaths are increasing at an absolutely unprecedented rate at the moment. Now, they give several reasons for the increase in despair, including the economic situation and the healthcare situation in the States. And, but you know what stood out for me as I, I read that was a quote by Anne Case, where she said, if you treat people horribly enough, for long enough, bad things happen to them. And I think that pretty much sums up what despair is. It's when you experience a situation that is really bad, and it just continues for such a long time that you don't see how things could ever be any different. You just lose hope. And it is then that people turn to other ways of trying to cope, like alcohol or drugs. And that then usually causes more depression and even more hopelessness. And sometimes they just choose to end it all as a result. In my own research for this message, I I just wondered about the link between the coronavirus and despair. And as I searched for it on Google, um, article after article just came up with despair, that were, the word that was used to just describe our current situation. You know, cries of despair from ground zero of the coronavirus outbreak. Nurses despair as panic buyers clear shelves. German state finance minister killed himself after despairing over how to handle the coronavirus crisis. And on and on it went. A few weeks ago, I spoke about hope and how this is absolutely essential for all of us. People need some form of hope. We absolutely need that. And what I find fascinating is the media's questions at press conferences. Because it just reflects this yearning in all people. They ask question of the question to try and extract a bit of hope from any announcement that's made. Friends, these are big issues. And any one of them can literally steal someone's life. And so the question is, how do you overcome these issues? Or to put it another way, what makes life really worth living? I can tell you what the world would say. If you look at hundreds of thousands of books and songs and movies, it seems as though everyone agrees that a life filled with love is a life worth living. And I actually agree with that. And the Apostle Paul actually agreed with that as well. Or maybe the world just agrees with what the Apostle Paul said. Because he said it a long time ago in Ephesians 5 verse 2. Live a life filled with love. If you think about it, the three issues that feels as though it makes life not worth living are all issues where people are deprived of love. Rejection often occurs when the love that someone shows is not reciprocated. Loneliness is caused by a lack of meaningful, loving relationships. And despair is caused by a lack of hope. And that is something that could be overcome by the possibilities that true love would offer them. And therefore, I would argue that if you want to overcome these issues in your life, and if you want to live a meaningful life, a life of purpose, you've got to make sure that you live a life filled with love. And to do that, you've got to discover the source of love. And John tells us very clearly where to find it. Love comes from God. He couldn't be any clearer than that. Love comes from God. If you want an everlasting, sustainable, all-encompassing love that can fill you more than anything else in life, a love that is unconditional, you've got to go to the source. You've got to turn to God. The first part of this verse, though, also tells us what that would lead to. In verse 7, John says, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. The amazing thing is, 
that when you go to the source of love, when you go to God himself, you are filled up with love in such a way that you are able to love other people as well. Even when it may be difficult at times. And friends, it will be. Sometimes it is hard to love certain people. And they may deliberately make it hard for you to love them because of their own hurt that they have experienced in their lives. And if you try and do it on your own, it will never be enough. It often seems to me that people run out of love because they try and do it in their own strength. And that's never enough. If you want true, lasting love, then you've got to let God fill you up with His love. He is the source of love. Only then will you have enough love to also spread to other people as well. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. If you ever wonder whether God loves you, just look at the cross and see how Jesus hung there and said, this is how much I love you. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. If we let God fill us up, we cannot do anything but love other people. And that is why Jesus' followers throughout the ages have felt compelled to reach out to people who feel rejected, who feel lonely, who are in utter despair. Because only God's love is strong enough to overcome those feelings and all those issues. Verse 12, no one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us. And his love is brought to full expression in us. When you make sure you are connected to the source of love, you become a channel of God's love. And you literally show God to the people around you. Verse 14, furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Jesus is the one who can save you. No matter who you are, no matter what you may be facing in life, Jesus is the one who can save you. Verse 15, all who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them. And they live in God. We know how much God loves us. And we have put our trust in His love. God is love. And all who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So what will love change in you? What difference will it make if you are connected to the source of love? Verse 18. Such love has no fear. Because perfect love expels all fear, including the fear of rejection, of loneliness, and of despair. We love each other because He loved us first. This is the reason why Jesus' followers never need to run out of love. That is why we can continue to love, even when it is hard, even when it is really difficult. And that is why Jesus can tell us to love our neighbor as well as our enemy. Not because we will naturally be inclined to do this, because we won't. However, if we remember that God showed His love to us on that cross, that Jesus saved us, even though we are full of sin, even though we may be unlovable at times as well, He still paid a price for us. And when we accept this, and when we let God fill us up with His love, and we keep our focus on Him, then love will fill us up and will just flow from us to other people. We love and we can continue to love simply because he loved us first. And as Jesus said in John 13, love each other. Just as I've loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Friends, it is our love that will set us apart from the world because our love will not stop when things get difficult we are not going to run out or turn away because we are connected to the source of love love comes from him and therefore i want to encourage each one of you if you're a jesus follower make sure you are connected to the source of love and be a channel of his love to those around you all the people who may feel rejected or may feel lonely or are in utter despair. Reach out to them. And friends, if, 
you are maybe struggling with some of these big life stealers in your life, I want to encourage you to also turn to the source of love and of life and of hope and ask him to help you to overcome it. You may have to pick up the phone and contact someone to help you get some therapy so that you could work through the reasons for the feelings of rejection you may be experiencing right now. Friends, I honestly believe that nowhere will you find greater acceptance for who you are than at the source of love. God is the one who made you and he loves you more than you would ever know. He gave his only son so that you could have life and have it in abundance. He went to the absolute extreme to show his love for you. And when you realize who you are in him, what your identity is just because you belong to him, it will build your confidence and your self-esteem more than any human development program ever would be able to do. So if you've ever experienced any rejection in your life and you struggle as a result of that, go to the source of love. Start with him. And what if you struggle with loneliness? How do you overcome that? Again, friends, I believe that discovering the source of love will help you with this, as you will realize that you are never alone anymore. God promised that he is with you and you always have his Holy Spirit in you. And honestly, friends, the greatest comfort I can give to people who are going through any difficulty in life is to tell them God is with you. There is no greater comfort than that. I also want to encourage you, though, to use the technology at our disposal and reach out to someone you, you think may be lonely. And if you are lonely, reach out to other people and tell them how you feel. Friends, as Jesus followers, I believe that we should be there for each other. And we should be there for anyone who might feel lonely. If you think of somebody who's struggling with this, send them a message of encouragement. Just pick up the phone and say, hello, how are you doing? Remember, the reason why we can love other people is because God loved us first. When we make sure we are connected to the source of love, we will never run out of love for other people around us, including those people who feel lonely right now. And lastly, how do you overcome the hopelessness of despair? I believe it lies in discovering the source of hope, what we speak about, spoke about on Easter Sunday. However, I also believe that another way of helping you to overcome any form of despair is to discover the source of love. And just incidentally, it's the same source. Romans 8, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, you don't have to despair. You don't have to lose hope, whatever your circumstances may be, because our hope is not in our circumstances. It's not in whatever is being communicated by the, by the media to us. It's not in relying on our salaries or knowing that we have done all the right things, following all the guidelines as we should. That is not where our hope lies. Our hope lies in, lies in the fact that nothing will separate us us from God's love for us. Not the coronavirus, not cancer, not anxiety, not fear, not rejection, not loneliness, not despair, not even death itself. Nothing will separate us from God's love for us. Friends, love makes life worth living. And if you want to continue to love other people, even when it's difficult, even when it's really hard, even when you are faced with massive crisis in your own life, make sure you are connected to the source of love, God himself. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you so much that you sacrificed yourself on the cross for us. Thank you that you proved your love for us once and for all. Thank you that we never have to wonder whether you love us. So please help us to be connected to you. And to find a reason to love other people in you. And Lord, I just want to pray specifically for anyone who might be struggling with feelings of rejection right now. Please help them to realize that you will never reject them. And you love them 
just the way they are. And I pray for everyone who might be feeling lonely right now. Please make them aware of your presence so that they will know that you will always be with them and you will never leave them. You will never forsake them. And for anyone who's in despair, for anyone who just can't see a way out, Lord, please be their hope as only you can be. And please, Lord, help all of us to reach out to those people in need and show your love to them in practical ways. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. Friends, please receive God's blessing and go and show God's love to those around you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.